know how I love Lucite. Well, the look of Lucite and the metallic sponge is just over the top. It is so posh. Now, I'm going to do several projects with Lucite, giving you the how-tos with this fabulous um, material to work with. Now, I'm going to begin with a bookmark. I want to show you how Lucite uh, comes that is really ready for stamping. It's been sanded down on the top, and there's a protective coating of craft or a paper on the back. I have stripped one so you can kind of see. This looks like it's um, really, it's not clear. It's like a smoky looking piece of Lucite, but that is all going to change. The reason you need this on the top is for protection against your glossy surface. And you are going to work on the sanded or the rough surface first. Now, it takes when I do my design on this to stand out with the acrylic background, I have to think everything backwards. My foreground, I stamp first. Then my background, I stamp last. Usually on a card, it's background first, foreground pop out. So I'm just thinking the opposite, and I'm building up layers only on the back. So the tools I need, oh my gosh, cut and dry. This is just an incredible product that has made all of this so easy to use, like the type of ink I'm going to use first, and that's called Decorit. Now this ink is permanent, open up your windows. It is solvent-based, but it will dry perfectly on any dark, I mean any hard, difficult to deal with surface. So I have cut up the cut and dry to a little sponge. This is the cut and dry foam version. There's a felt version, but mm, the foam version is what I use for Lucite. And in that, I just pop some of this ink with the windows open on a cut and dry. Then I take my stamp. So this goes in the, the um, decorate. I kind of check make sure it has the right amount of ink. I'm going to put this at an angle and carefully, try not to rock it, do the stamp. And then do it again. I'm following here. Right like that. All the way up until I get this look. Now, it's important to get the ink off. I'm going to get most of the ink off this way. But I would take a solvent cleaner and get the rest of that stamp really clean right away so that it doesn't damage the stamp at all. Okay, now, having done that, now comes the fun part. I'm going to take some ink. Whoops, here, let's go with this. And do some gold on here because I'm going to cover up all of the insides of those stars. So I'm just putting this on the top. And going over. Each little square, each little square, square, square. Now, it's a good thing to put this in a little baggie, wait 10 minutes, come back, and go over those to make them more opaque. The more layers, the more opaque. And you want it looking good on the other side. So I've done that. I think I did this three times to get those nice and strong. Now I'm going to take another size from our Ink Abilities and do some coloring. I thought because of the stars, I would do some red and blue. So I'll get the blue. And the red, which is really like a pink. Now to make those little stronger colors, I'm going to go to the blue dye based and to the red dye-based. 
I don't have to shake those. Now I go back like I did before with the metallic and cover that again. You've already gotten it strong. And then get my other blue, which I've put back, which I rarely do, <laughs> and put it over the top there. Now we're going to stripe across this. This is the tricky thing. I think it's a good idea to take some tape and put this on the other side, it does not matter, and really press it down because then you don't have to hold it. There's hardly a place to hold it. And go along, and go along, along and along. Now, I would wait five to ten minutes putting this in a bag and go over it again and again, such as I've done here, over and over. Now, now I've set that down straight. At this point, I take some tweezers and remove the top. Oh, one thing. I'm so glad I didn't remove the top. I love to edge the side of the lucite. So go over with your metallic, since I use gold, all around the edge, it'll just make it that much more posh. And you don't see your ink. Now, that'll dry pretty quickly. We'll just take, the easiest way is for me is to just, yeah, sure I can do it, right here, just to start to pull it up and use, oh my gosh, you see what fun it is? And here we have our stripes. And the last thing I would do is to take ribbon and put it through and I'd have a tag. Now, I do the ribbon in a special way that I really want to tell you. I don't do it like you do a luggage tag and just feed it through. I would put it through. This might be hard to get together. And I take it in a clump and tie the knot. Let me try to show you because I think it makes a difference in the way that these look. It's always in the details. So I get it this way and I do an overhand knot. Pull it through and then pull that knot right toward the edge and you have a better looking bookmark. And then scissors, of course, will take off those added ends, which I won't bother to do this minute. Now, I want to show you a completely different style of bookmark that is equally as fun. And that is with a name. Because bookmarks, everybody loves to see their name. I do this in a different way. I'll take the sponge, like the top, of the sponge. I did it in gold. Where is my gold sponge? Yes. And I'm going to mix a few colors with it because we can do anything we want. Shake the copper and maybe add a little copper here to that gold. And then maybe add some pink to that gold. And I'm even going to add a little dye baste in here. Whoa love to get that variation. And then I'll just finish up with some gold. Now I'm going to take a brand new bookmark and if I were writing out a name, like I'm going to choose the name Holly, for instance. H-O-L-L-Y, five letters. So I want to leave room for my sponge one, two, three, four, five. So I've done my sponging that way, all as placeholders. Now, the next thing I do, 
This is all dry, so you can see that. I build it up a second time. The next step is to take, oh, I have discovered a wonderful little pen that goes through so beautifully as dark black. And I'm going to put dots all around each one because I want to pop these letters. Now, I'm going like this, and don't worry, I am not going to go through this whole thing. I have one already prepared, but I'm going around until I get this look. Dots all over that. Then, my last thing, remember I'm working from the front to the back, and I know you're going to probably say, but where are the letters? I didn't put the letters on first, but if I were to do my alphabet, it would be completely upside down, I mean backwards. So I'm going to do a trick and show you how I do that. Now, over the back, we want to get um, some color. And I am choosing, with my small sponge here, some gold, gold on both sides, and some copper, and some pink. Ooh, ooh, pink, pink. Here it is. Then I again want to put it over the area where this will stay constant and just go right over the back of the sponge. I mean the back of the lucite. You see with the coating? Now I will do this probably two more times and what I get when I do that is a solid. I used a little purple in the center of this instead of pink and then we go across the edge, we take the tweezers and pull it off, and you'll see what we have. Okay. <laughs> we have some nice placeholders for the alphabet. And it's glossy, it's just fabulous, and we've done it all from the back side, but the letters. Okay. Now this is extra tricky. I'm going to go over to my pointed brush alphabet set, which is right up here, and I want you to notice that I have done metallic ink on my entire box. I painted it black first, and then inside we have the letters. Okay, Holly starts with an H. Now, this is so tricky. This is going to slip and slide. Only do this early in the morning when you are completely at peace and put it down most carefully and lift up. So I'm doing this upside down, so I want to do, and so it's right side up for you, and I'm going to press down carefully. I don't want to slide and lift straight up, <laughs> and I got it. Now I get most of the ink off of that and then clean that right away. Now let's go to the O. Again, it kind of sections on there, but we're able to stamp on that. Let's do two L's. Good, that saves me cleaning one letter. Make sure you ink up again. Just don't go over. If you have two in a row, you need to get extra ink. And then finish with a Y. Hmm. Here. Now all you do, oh, oh, I'm so glad that this happened because this gives me a chance to show you. The Y is a little weak, if you can see this. I need a little more over here. This pen blends with that ink so beautifully and I can do my touch-up work with anything that might have a little shadow or not get ink perfectly. So that's just a little detail I might do. 